Welcome to the version 2.0 of assessment task number one. Based on the week two class, a new version of the assessment task, a modified and improved version, uh, drawing on the feedback received from the cohort, has been released. This is your update patch to bring you up to speed on the requirements. It has been recorded on the 30th of the 7th, 2019. So the housekeeping here, this information video is accurate as at the 30th of July. That may be subject to updates and patches. Please check Wattle for the most recent version of the assessment requirements. Assessment requirements can and will change based on the needs of the audience and the feedback in terms of clarifications that are sought. However, this video should serve you well in preparation of your assignment. So, the reason we have this first assessment task is threefold. The university requires me to have one assessment task that is set, delivered, marked and returned to you before week six. This will be due in week four on the Friday of week four to enable me to turn this around and mark it in time to give it back to you before Friday of week six. Requirement one met. Requirement two. The learning outcome for services marketing includes the following statement. Define, explain and illustrate services marketing concepts and their application to profit and non-profit service delivery. I'm asking you to focus on profit service delivery in this assessment task and you are getting to use services marketing concepts and frameworks. A very specific task outcome for this assessment is I want you to apply segmentation theory for a services marketing outcome. I want you to consider a value offer. I want you to convert a conceptual theoretical idea into a practical application. And I want to give you the feedback on how well you have presented this information to me, how well you are using your marketing theory and how good you are at segmentation. And I would very much like the answer of how good you are at segmentation to be very, very good. Thank you very much. So, the question. Assessment task number one is going to ask you to identify a services marketing opportunity. It can be the solution to a services marketing problem. It can be the identification of a market opportunity, but basically I'm looking for you to deliver a suggestion on how a service that is either existing or could be new could offer a new value offer, modify a value offer, improve it, create it, do something with a value offer that would be a benefit to them because it would address a market of interest. Effectively, this is getting you to apply your theory and your knowledge of services to look at the world and go, I could use it here. I'm going to use it here. There are sub requirements to this question and they are across three parts. Part number one. I want you to outline the value offer. This is the identification of that opportunity, the recognition that there's a problem that can be solved, an opportunity that can be capitalized on, a gap in the market to seize, a product to modify, a service value offer to change to fit a new target market or a new delivery format. Basically, this is your practical application of your marketing knowledge of how to identify an opportunity and then how to identify it within the context of services marketing. So it can be solving a problem, it can be improving a service that is adequate or satisfactory to bring it up to beyond adequate or beyond satisfactory, it can be taking 
something that's not satisfactory and bringing it up to a level of ordinary. A poorly performing service can be improved to an ordinary performing service. A problem can be solved. There is a gap, there is a failure, there's a lack of value in the offer, there's an absence of some fundamental element that's needed, so it can be a solution to a problem. You can look at it and go, I've got an idea for a new service product, and then you're into new product development, entrepreneurship, extending product offer, adapting something to a new context, there's a lot of options there. Or it can be the modification of a current service into a new delivery format or a new target market. Just make it one of them though. You've got 500 words, outline to me the value offer that you're setting out to either solve, improve, create or modify. Give me context for it. Give me uh, what it is, what it does, how it provides value to a customer, and any context that I'm going to need to understand it. Is it from a small company, a large company? Is it part of a bigger product portfolio? Is it the first, com is it the first product the company's offering? Think about what I need to know for it to make sense to me as a reader and communicate that in this 500 words. The word lengths are recommended. Part two. After giving me something to work with, after pitching to me a, a value offer, the thing you want to solve, improve, create, or modify, I want you to pick two relevant and useful services marketing theories or frameworks that you could apply to make this work. This is about looking over what you're learning in this course or you might be about to learn or you want to look up through research and going, well, if I'm going to improve this product, this theory would be really handy or this framework would be really handy, this would work. Or here's a problem, I want to solve that problem, what's a good, oh this, this framework, this theory would work. So your absolute dead giveaway in this is that the theory's got to tie in to the value offer. If you say to me that you are going to create a new service product, build something brand new, hasn't existed, doesn't exist, you automatically can't use theories that talk about improvement or enhancing existing. If you're trying to build from new, then your theory's got to tie in. Same way, if you're talking about improving an existing service, you're talking about quality improvements. There are frameworks you can use, but it's going to exclude some frameworks. So it will become important for you to think through what services theories, frameworks or concepts or ideas support what you want to do in part one. It's also important that the target markets that you select in part three work with the frameworks that you're talking about. So if you're looking at doing a business to business service provision then you can't use business to consumer theories to solve a business to business problem or to improve a business to business service. So if you're looking at how banks provide financial support to small businesses, your theoretical framework around how individuals interact in a service scape probably isn't going to help you there. It's probably not going to work for you there. So be mindful of this. This is the core of this paper. Looking at the asset set you have available to you in the concepts, ideas and frameworks in this course, picking two that are the best fit for the task that you have set yourself. Part three, I want you to give me two target markets. I want you to identify a primary target market. And then I want you to give me a secondary market, a backup market. A target market means that you're drawing on your segmentation, targeting, positioning strategy knowledge from your prior courses. And you're identifying a clearly defined, specified, and narrowly focused group of people 
who would be highly receptive to your value offer. Those three criteria are mission critical here. You have to be able to show me in writing who the audience is, who's the primary audience. Give me their characteristics and traits. Segmentation has a lot of theory around it. There is a really good set of segmentation elements, things like geographic segmentation, demographic, psychographic, consumption patterns. Consumer behavior provides you with a range of behavioral patterns you could use. And your target market needs to tie back to the problem statement of part one, the value offer. If you're solving an existing value offer, if you're solving a problem with an existing value offer, your target market's probably going to need to have some relationship with that value offer. If you are creating a new service product, then you're going to need to tell me about the nature of who's going to want to adopt a new product, who's going to want to pick up a new target market. If you're modifying to fit a new market, your primary market, you have a product, you have a value offer, you're taking it across to a new market. You're going to need to tell me some details of that new market. If it's a new delivery format for an existing market, tell me about that market. It needs to be, your primary and your secondary market both need to be clearly identified, clearly defined, and narrowly focused. The narrow focus is the area students have done badly in the past and I'd like to see done well. The reason I ask for a narrow focus is that this is your first and second markets, not the only markets you would ever address. You want the first most responsive and then the second next most responsive audiences to the value offer that you are engaging in part one. It is also highly likely this is the area where you're going to experience the most amount of cognitive dissonance, the most amount of, but I want to address everyone, but my product is for everyone, everywhere, all the time. That's wrong. That doesn't happen. That's not how marketers think. Don't do it. Give me specific. Give me identifiable, clearly defined, and narrowly focused. I'm hammering this home because traditionally this is the part people have the most problem with. And this will be the difference between you bear passing and you bringing home the HD. And my goal is to bring home as many HDs as is feasible. Technicalities, questions people always ask me. Essay, report, essay or report style, whatever you write better, use it. I run my subject on the work to strength rule. What you do well, do. If you want to explore a new style and format you haven't done before, you've got three other subjects this semester, give me the one you're good at. I want your A game, I want your best performance, I want your strength. I want you showing me that you are one of the best there is and best there ever will be. Give me your A game. The length, it's 2,000 words. You have a plus minus 10% window in this, so you can go 1800 to 2200. You, if you are below 1800, your grade will be bad and you will not enjoy it because you will not have given me enough information to reward you. If you are above 2200, your grade will be bad and you won't enjoyment, enjoy it because you didn't answer the question, you didn't get your clarity. Most likely, the places that you're going to run into problem, you are probably going to have a word count thing of either you're struggling to make up the words in target market, in which case you haven't made your decisions clear enough, you haven't made your specifications narrow enough, and you're struggling to define an outline. If you're going over the word count, the place you can probably have trouble with is that you're not thinking, how do I focus my paper? Go back and look at your part one. Have you made 
a clear decision and has that decision informed the rest of the paper. As far as referencing style, I read and use about six different reference styles. I use, uh, by preference, I use the APA style, but I accept Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, MLA, legal, footnote, and whatever you want to use. Use what you're best at, use what you do well, use what you like, uh, just make it consistent. Don't split your format styles and don't confuse me. Do ensure that everything you cite in the text does show up in your reference list. Uh, that's just good practice. I prefer indirect quotes and uh, the use of ideas and acknowledge use of ideas rather than direct quotes and poor paraphrasing. If you are turn it in clashing, you are most likely to turn it in clash over a poorly paraphrased direct quote, in which case, throw that whole sentence out, throw that whole paragraph out, come back and rewrite it to the context of your paper. Nobody's written a paper like this before because we co-created it in the class. This doesn't exist anywhere other than us, so nobody else has a perfect set of words. Build one that's custom to the requirements. Write me an essay that works for the question that we have built together. Finally, this is an individual essay task. This is mandatory solo individuality. Should you want to work with a team in the second assessment task, you have a strategic decision to make here as to how you collaborate. My recommendation is that you try and line yourselves up that everyone has selected the same value offer and everyone has the same target market in mind then all players in the crew go for their own interpretation so that they've got something to bring to the team meeting afterwards. Alternatively, you could go with the everyone puts, the whole crew puts in a different value offer, theory and target market, winner takes all, highest point scorer becomes captain and you do that for the group project. Or thirdly, you put in a, the same value offer. Everyone comes up with the same offer, they do their own take on it, and then you run a gauntlet of everyone contributes a different variant on the theory and a different variant on the target market, and you have a wide range of opportunities of what is it you want to focus on for the sequel. However it works, this paper will be unique to you you are going to showcase to me, your client, how well you can engage with theory, how well you can identify a, pro a market opportunity, a problem or a market opportunity, and how well you can write up that idea and how you would use the marketing theory to best implement that idea. So, if there are questions to this assessment task, feel free to send me an email, <laughs> hit us up on Twitter. Uh, if you do require further information, let me know because if you need it, chances are someone else needs it and you'll be playing your role in the seduction model of the useful other customer if you provide the knowledge to me that there is additional areas that we need to expand and work on. And also thank you to the team who worked on assessment task one in the week two seminar. This video and this reboot of the assessment task would not have been possible without your contributions. So again, in this course, we are going to co-develop, co-design and co-create our way to the best possible outcomes we can come up with. <laughs>